There's no one special in the team. Eagles are left at the door. There's no one better than anyone else. Each player has a part to play. And that's it, basically. It's magnificent. I mean, it's bigger than any event in golf. And I'll watch it to the day I die. When I got on tour, this was obviously something very special, uh, the Ryder Cup. And when I made my first one in 81, that was me hooked. It was just magnificent, you know, playing against the Americans. I grew up watching the big three. And to have the opportunity to come up against some of these people was quite beyond belief. Good evening from Walton Heath and the 24th Ryder Cup match between Europe and the United States of America. It was uh, daunting. They were magnificent. Uh, they had a team there, I think it was, at the time, it was the best team they ever birthed. Ten major winners, it was extraordinary, but fabulous. You know, my first match was against Johnny Miller and Tom Kite. I came down on the last screen, I had about a 12-foot putt to win the match. Torrance has this for the three and the victory. Yeah! Oh, shoot out, because I'm in floods of tears for this, but... Uh, I'll never forget it, and that was the start. That was, we just wanted back in. The next time the Ryder Cup is played, it'll be on their soil in America in two years' time. I hope you'll be with us again then. 83, Tony Jacklin changed everything. We got cashmere sweaters. Uh, we flew on Concord. Uh, the hotels were better. He made us feel very special. We, I mean, the tournament did that as well, but he enhanced that enormously. Uh, he was a, a great captain. In fact, we lost by a point. Lanny Watkins could win this hole. But you can't lay up. You've got to try to knock it as close as you can, obviously. That's Sam Torrance. Oh, 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 oh. And he's done it. And up close. Lanny Watkins at the last. And Nicholas kissing the divot was just beyond belief to see this great man doing that because he, he hit it like that to uh, beat Jose Maria uh, Canizares. And uh, it hurt. It really hurt, but it was so close. The United States has retained the Ryder Cup by the narrowest of margins, 14 and a half points to 13 and a half points. They were in bits, to be honest. Um, generally, you only cry when you win, but there was a few in there who couldn't stop themselves. Great Britain and Europe has never tied or won on this side of the ocean, but what an effort they made this year. See at the prize giving. Okay. See at the prize giving. We swore that night on the Sunday night we'll be back and we will win. And we did, 85. The final day of the Bell Scotch Ryder Cup. And for the first time since 1949, the United States were trailing going into the final session of singles. The score before play started here today at the Belfry, Europe nine points and the United States seven. This Saturday night, Tony's talking to the team, uh, anyone uh, got any requests. I was sitting there and Watkins was one of the toughest, uh, kind of a great friend, but one of the toughest competitors you could ever come up against. And little Manuel Pinero, he's five foot eight, skinny, and he had to run about in the shower to get wet. I mean, there's just nothing of him. Put his hand on him and says, I want Watkins. So Tony says, you can have him, pal. You can have him, we'll put you out first. And, and he came up against Watkins and he beat him. Three and one. Pinero, this to go three up. Dormy three. Oh, all the way. And that against the man regarded as the toughest of all the Americans, Lenny Watkins. Which is incredible to first out singles and win your match when you've asked for it. Truly special. He concedes first blood to Europe, a victory to Manuel Pinero. Of course, he's first out, so you see it on the scoreboard that he's beaten them, he's, and then he beats them. It's a huge lift, huge lift. Sam Torrance is one down to the US Open champion Andy North. I was horrific on the front line against Andy North. Oh, nice. 
artist came alive in about nine, a birdie dead, birdie at 11, birdie at 13, uh, birdie at 15, birdie at 17. God knows where it came from. Sam Torrance, this little putt for a birdie four, which would win the hole. Funny, I've seen the putt, and I'm not shaking at all, but it felt like it was like this. He's got it, he's got it. And uh, I'll hold it. That was a tough one. So Sam, all square, one to play. Go to the last tee, I had a good drive. I wasn't sure if it was carrying the water at all, and then I heard the roar on the other side, it had gone right to the end. And just one more point needed to win the Ryder Cup, and Torrance, huge drive, no more than eight, nine iron from the green. And uh, he skied his. As soon as it hit it, I knew exactly where it was in the water. US Open champion. T-shirt down the lake. And uh, from that moment on to hold myself together was tough. <laughs> we had three parts to win. My mum could handle that. It was, uh, it was not a difficult, difficult case. The, the part on 17 was the one. But of course it goes in, which uh, just advanced a wee bit. In 85 changed my life. I only went and bought, uh, I haven't bought a drink since. <laughs> no, uh, it really changed my life. The, the support I got for only being part of a team. It was uh, incredible. I've dreamt about it all my life, Clive, and this is the greatest moment I've ever had. But just something new, something so special was coming. It is quite simply the proudest moment of my golfing career to be standing here before you as captain of the 2001 European Ryder Cup team. You get older, you get wiser. It was a great honour. Curtis, have a great week, boys. May the best team win. Thank you very much. The captain's almost like the headmaster, you know. As a player, you were terrified to go and speak to the captain or ask him for something. Well, that's what the vice captain's are there for. He'll take it to the captain, he'll sort it, and it'll be fixed. I wasn't at speeches at night and rip roaring and getting them standing and clapping. More man on man. I would speak to each one individually and just talk to them, prepare them. It just goes so quickly. You know, there's always, no matter how far ahead or far behind, there's a moment that comes that changes everything. And now everything rests on the young Lee Westwood's shoulders. As to hold us, for half a point. No. Oh dear. It's a shame they struggled hard valiantly. And the Americans have come through very well in the afternoon four balls after a titanic struggle. He had a putt like that on the last green and he missed it. That never happened. That doesn't happen. And from that moment on, the Americans were favoured to win. I know exactly what, what Sam has tried to do. I know what we try to do and we'll have to wait and see. We were all going in about who I thought was playing best first and who I thought was not playing best last. I think Curtis, bless him, uh, made a mistake in putting Woods last and Mickelson second last as two best players. Curtis has his own way of putting out his 12 guys and I have my way. If it comes down to the last two matches, he might be looking favorite. If it doesn't, <laughs> But uh, and when the draw came out Saturday night, we actually roared in the team room. You know, this is our chance. It was over before they even got on the team. We were up in seven of the first eight matches. And I don't care who you are, you're either going to stand up or you're not. Even the best player in the world can fold, and it was the same with Mariki. So magnificent. Philip Price puts the pressure on Phil Mickelson. 
Hell, the shadows. Come the heroes. Oh, it's just extraordinary. Tell him who I beat. <laughs> Very special. Philip Price has won another point for the Europeans. Price beats Phil Mickelson, the world number two. The Europeans need only now one more hole. And here's McGinley at 17 to win the hole and square the match. McGinley's done it. I spoke to Paul Camarillo the last bridge. Uh, I felt he was going to do it, no question, but there were opportunities to come behind, so it wasn't, this is the last chance for it. I don't think that changed Paul's thinking. He had a great chip and a perfect part. It's all it. Europe have won back the Ryder Cup. Paul McGinley has got the half point to ensure that Sam Torrance and his team win back the Cup after three years. Very special. It's almost, it's not like you're doing it, but it's your man. Someone's in the pool. The ducks are getting a bit of a fright there. <laughs> Suzanne and I walked back up to the hotel. Incredible. I wasn't getting in that pond, that's for sure. I escaped that one. <laughs> and now he's involved in the presentation ceremony. <laughs> oh, what a way. And I tell you this, they'll work hard to get the team to the closing ceremony, to round them all up. The greatest week of my golfing life by far. Nothing.